What I want to talk about today is definitely technology, but in a different, in a different vein than what we've talked about earlier today, and probably for those of you that are deep in the, the technology space for financial services, probably a little bit different than, than what you think of as technology. And, and mine is technology and service. As the Chief Customer Relationship Officer for RJ O'Brien, I'm responsible not only for, for the elements of all touch points of the customer, but how that then integrates with the overall business and how the technology plays in. Um, you know, as I mentioned, RGO has been around for a long time, and, and there are many years that we use technology simply to communicate with our customers. It's not about, I'm not going to talk about trading. I'm not going to talk about um, ways that we use technology, I would say, in, uh, in those sexy ways, in those ways that gets business done. This is all about building the customer relationship. There's no doubt that technology runs our business today. It is in everything we do on the financial services side. I would dare say probably in any industry, technology runs it. But we can't look at technology as just the technology itself. Without the human element, the technology is as cold as anything can be. And in many ways can actually serve as a detriment to, uh, to the overall customer satisfaction. If you really look at what technology is used for in more of an ancillary or a support role throughout our industry, it's everything from, from sales management, it's true customer service, it's getting in front of the customer, getting to know them better. We're all growing in ways in this industry that we never thought was even possible. So the idea of having a town hall where literally this used to happen now goes through through WebEx, it goes through GoToMeeting, it goes through conference bridges that allows everything to pull it together. And it's an interesting spot as you look at your careers and you look at ways that, that you want to progress in this industry is finding that sweet spot in the middle. When I began at, at RJ O'Brien, I was a technology guy, admittedly. I ran the dot-com bubble all the way up and down, exploded inside of it. And, and the biggest benefit that I had was realizing that the financial services industry is one of the best leveraging elements of technology, both from the purest sense, the trading, electronic access, all the way down to the support level. And, uh, and as a young kid coming into R.J. O'Brien in a business that was moving, we're moving from the floor to the screen, we're building the business in ways that we never thought was even possible. We then come forward and say, how are we going to dovetail this in with this new world? And, and that's the sweet spot. It's that sweet spot in between where I was able to, to move forward, utilize technology, and also communicate with the customer, figure out what that customer wanted, bridge that gap between these two disparate worlds, one that was definitely tradition. It was rich in legacy. It was personal along with the technology, which, again, unto itself, is cold, it's utilitarian, it's, it's, it's ease of use, it's all about process and programming and access and speed. And how do you take those two elements and stick them together? Because that's the way we move forward. If we go, if we get to the part that, to the point that we're actually just pushing technology and not interacting with each other, in, in our businesses ourselves, as well as with our customers, we actually end up doing a greater disservice. I want to read just real quickly from, from a writer that I follow from, from Inc. Magazine, um, Eric Sherman, who talks about how isolation of your customers can completely destroy your business. And he quotes that isolation alone can make you take actions that actually hurt other people and your customers without even realizing it, creating resentment instead of goodwill. And that's what it's all about. It's all about how can you get in and continue these relationships. And it's the young minds in this room that are going to figure out how to do it. Because we've moved it so far. We've moved it to the point that we felt that, that we could integrate with, uh, with the pits. We could bring technology in. But we're growing, constantly growing. And how do we continue to have relationships? How do we continue to be rich in the way that we deal with our customers, our partners, and our vendors? We all do it. I'm, I'm guilty. I mean, there's, there's the, the, the idea of sending a text instead of a phone call, sending an email instead of a personal conversation. 
it's easy. As, as the chief relationship officer at RJO, I would much rather send some bad news via email and go off and, and, and grab a beer at the pub at 3.30 than I would to actually stand up and get on the phone and have that conversation or get in a cab and get over to the location that I need to be at and really discuss the problem, work the problem out. But we've got to pull through that. I mean, we're in a society today where, again, it's much easier to use technology than it is to build that relationship. And it's going to be the challenge of all of us to continue to make sure that that environment does continue in a personal and, and beneficial, um, uh, in a beneficial way. So I mean, that, that's the key. That's what it all really comes about. And, and that's where mixing the technology with the service comes into play. I'm going to quote uh, one more from, from a gentleman from Forbes, Micah Solomon, that, that, I, that I follow, where technology by itself doesn't do anything on its own. And I quote, anything. But it works in your great favor as soon as you develop a company policy and a mindset of using communications and automation to let customers hear from you before they even know that they need anything, before they even ask for anything themselves. In other words, this is as much a brain change as it is a technology change. That's what we're going through. We're going through a brain change. The technology is there. But how do we bring in the elements of our personal lives to continue on in the technology, to continue to grow this business. So I leave that to you to find out. Um, I've, uh, I've got uh, a little bit of time here left. Um, a, a, a bit of, of advice um, about sort of yourselves and, and, and where you may want to go in this industry or, or any industry, and it has nothing to do with, with communication or technology at all. It's all about being a resource. If I could give you one bit of advice and what's really worked for me, and I've seen it work for, for countless others, is as you come into something that you really love, the best thing that you can do for yourself and for your career is to just be there. Be the first to raise your hand. Be the first to offer your assistance. You don't always need the answer, but if you've got the willingness to work and you've got the willingness to help, people don't forget that. And you may not be the best at what it is that you're doing, but the fact that you've gone out there, you've put yourself out, and you've committed to getting the answer. That's what's going to get you to the next level, whatever that level is, whether you decide to stay in financial services, you decide to go to marketing, advertising, shipping, manufacturing. That's the key to everything, is get somewhere that you want to be, and then be seen and be helpful.